Hi. In this lesson, I want to talk about a new method of radiometric dating. It's called the samarium neodymium technique, and it's increasingly being used as a more accurate way of establishing uh, the age of a rock or a geological event. Now, this technique, though it does work um, through radioactive decay, works differently from the decay curves that we've seen uh, for potassium argon dating. So we need to look at how this particular technique works and how we can interpret uh, the dates for this. You will need the uh, samarium neodymium uh, worksheet, uh, which is uh, also labeled up uh, with a place that we're going to study later called Ballon Tray. Okay, then, let's go. Samarium neodymium is named after the elements uh, involved. And if we look where they are on the periodic table, you can see that these elements are down in the, in the rarer end of the table. So we don't find a lot of these uh, elements within a mineral, but we can find trace amounts and we can use those to work out the age of the rock that they're found in. Now, the way this works is by looking at the ratios of these different isotopes of 147 samarium, 143 neodymium, and 144 neodymium. And we look at these ratios in different minerals. So we've got uh, their ratios in plagioclase uh, and in two different types of pyroxene. Pyroxene is just another type of, uh, or is a name for augite. We don't really need to worry about the difference between them. Okay. When the rocks first form then, we've got a, um, a ratio of these elements to each other. Now over time, what we see is the samarium decaying to form neodymium. So the ratios of these elements over time change. Now this ratio you can see is slightly different from what we've seen uh, with potassium argon because we're not just talking about two uh, elements, a parent and daughter. We're talking about the uh, these three elements and the ratio of those. Let me try and illustrate. If we have these uh, four samples, so we've got our plagioclase and our two types of orgite, we also have the whole rock sample. Now what we can do for this is we can uh, establish the ratio of the two isotopes of neodymium and the ratio of samarium and neodymium. And we can plot those and when we uh, when the rock is first formed we'll see uh, the ratio of these being uh, the same in all of these different minerals. Notice, by the way, on this graph, there are no numbers. Okay, we don't tend to worry too much about numbers on this. Over time, then, what we see is a change in these ratios. But the change isn't constant in each of these different minerals. We see a bigger change in orthopyroxene and the smallest change in plagioclase. So the more time goes on, the more there's a divergence with this line that we call an isochron. And the line that we first started with, the ratio that we first started with. And it's the difference between these that allows us to establish the date.
Let me give you an example. So if we have uh, this graph, and this is taken from a, a past paper exam, so you can see the type of thing that you're uh, likely to get. If we've got an old, the isochron for an old basalt here, what do you think an isochron would look like for uh, a basalt that was erupted from the Ayafiatli Ockel in 2010? Sketch it on uh, this graph on your handout. So, if we sketch this line on, because the Ayafatli Oko is, is a, a modern basalt, we're going to have a, a horizontal line uh, with the same ratio of these uh, elements uh, in each of these minerals. It's only as time progresses that we'd see uh, a change to that more ancient basalt. So what I'd like you to do now, to make your notes, is to annotate this graph. What's this graph uh, showing us about how this process actually works? I'll give you five minutes to make some notes on that graph. Have a go at that now.
Okay. We can see from this that we've got uh, a technique that allows us to establish uh, a date. Now, it's not quite as straightforward as uh, the potassium argon method. But we won't have to do, in an exam, the same type of calculations that we might do for a, uh, a potassium argon type question. I want to show you um, how this would actually, uh, or what this might look like uh, in some type of assessment by actually looking at uh, applying this to a real example of uh, dating by these two different methods, potassium argon and samarium neodymium. Now, you know, these elements are are only found in small quantities. I and mean, if you do find enough of them, uh, especially neodymium, it's extremely useful. Uh, it's a very powerful but very light magnet. It means it can be used, for example, to make the uh, electric motors that uh, keep drones in the air. But we can find enough of this stuff to measure. And when we do, we can come up with some fairly accurate dates. Anyway, we need to apply that. But I think we'll do that in a different lesson. I'll see you then.